name is holy. He said this, I dwell in the high and holy place. And notice what he says, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. He said he'll revive our spirit. He'll revive our heart. I believe he's doing that already. I have felt him revive my spirit and my heart already this week. And how many know he's not done yet? He's not done yet. So why don't you turn around and greet somebody. Let them know it's good to see them. Amen. On a beautiful sunny spring morning. Yeah. Go ahead. Give them a smile. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Now let's invite His presence, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank You for this opportunity. Thank You, Lord, for our time of worship, the time that You give us in Your Word and in the altars. Bless today, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody shout amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every shut everything down and start all over again because electrical systems messing up stuff is going on so if we sound like we're struggling a little bit you guys sing really loud because I think you all can hear us but we can't hear us so that's what's going on up here so sing loud with us we want to worship him today amen hallelujah let's sing this old hymn together it says tis so sweet to trust in Jesus oh yeah we're gonna need to shut it down it's Go ahead and get these lights. We're going to need to reset these monitors. How many saw the light flicker earlier today here? That's what messes us up. When you switch over from analog to digital, I understand that there's a sequence of things that happen, so we have to do this. The stage lights, the stage lights.
Testing, one, two, testing. It's coming back. Can you all hear me now back here? There we go. Now we can hear. So now we all got good ears. All right. So let's sing. Why don't we just sing that first one again? We might as well. All right. Oh, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Oh. 
a good and a faithful God, and I was um, thinking of the lyrics as we were singing, I like how it says, all of my life, not just a portion of my life, because, you know, but all of my life, God has been so good to me, amen, if that's, if that's true in your case, why don't we take a moment right now, raise our hands, whatever you want to do, thank you, Lord, that you are so good. Your faithful God, your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer and uh, thank the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, the Son of Man did not come to bring condemnation, but that we can have life through His name. Hallelujah. This morning, God sent His Son into the world, right? It is an expression of His love that we might have life. And thank the Lord for speaking to us today. And if you're here this morning and you don't have life, if you... If you guilt, shame, because you've run from Christ, know that He stands and He beckons you to come and that you can experience that life today and then that through you, the love of God can be shown to other people. I'm thankful for that here this morning and we, we give Him all the praise and all the glory. We want to go to the Lord in prayer and we want to continue praying for revival and we had a great revival so far this week, but we want to pray for the service this morning. 
and uh, we want to pray for the service tonight as well. I want to pray for uh, Brother Kenny Wright, and uh, Brother Jones said, I believe he has a sister that is uh, uh, soon to pass away. We want to pray for, for him and his family. I want to continue praying for Sister Marisol. She has a uh, problem in her back and some pain. We want to pray for her. Uh, Sister Dorothy Drew, and uh, continue praying for her. Uh, Brother Ron Brown is in the hospital. And uh, how many knows we need to pray for the Middle East today? And a lot of us probably saw a, uh, you know, were disturbed yesterday by some of the news reports of Iran and Israel. So let's pray for the, the nation of Israel this morning. I read this uh, quote today uh, for, by a man by the name of S.D. Gordon who said, The greatest thing anyone can do for God and for man is to pray. It's simple, but it's true. The greatest thing that we can do for, for the nation of Israel, the, the greatest thing we can do for, for our lost loved one, not to go, you know, take them out to Longhorn, get them a nice steak, although that wouldn't be, wouldn't be bad, right? The greatest thing we can do is to pray. And I want to encourage us today, let's take advantage of that greatest privilege we have. If you would, let's pray, let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness that we've sung about, your uh, unending faithfulness and mercy. And God, we, we thank you this morning that we have the great privilege to come before the throne and to pray, God, on behalf of other people. And God, there's a lot to pray for today, God. There's uh, the status of our world is uncertain. But thank you, God, that you sit on the throne and you got all things under control. And uh, we need not fret. We need not worry. We just simply need to trust in you, God. Help us, we pray today, for Israel. We pray today, God, for Brother Kenny Wright, God, that you would be with him and his sister. Pray for Sister Marisol, God. We pray for Sister Dorothy Drew. Pray for all those uh, today, God, that are having problems and situations. Lord, let your love and your grace and your kindness be extended to them. God, save a soul today. Do something eternal. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, amen, amen. You can be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Amen, amen. Don't forget service tonight. Come back at 6.30. Look forward to it. I want the ushers to come ahead at this time. We'll worship the Lord with our giving. Lately, I've uh, done some, re uh, some reading and studying on the topic of happiness. Anybody ever uh, know that kind of a part of being an American is wanting to be happy? It's kind of in our Declaration of Independence, right, that for all mankind, we have the right to, for life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But I found something interesting as I was, uh, as I was studying uh, about happiness and reading some research on happiness. If you chase directly after happiness, you will chase it away. There's a lot of people that they set their mind on. They want to have a happy life. So what do they do? They go after the next big experience. They get a lot of a big purchases, a nice house, nice car. If you chase after happiness, you chase it away. Well, you know what the research finds? Those who are the happiest, who are, those who are happiest, they do not directly chase after happy, happiness. They actually chase after something of purpose, meaning, sacrificial giving, a, something that is a greater cause than just my own self. Okay, So I'm going to tell you this morning, guess what? If you want to be happy, stop chasing happiness. If you want to be happy, one way that you can guarantee that happiness can come to you is as a follower of Jesus Christ, partnering with the, the kingdom of God and giving financially. Because those who give, guess what? They're the happiest. The Bible says, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I can guarantee you one thing, as a lot of people in here can, can speak and confirm, if you give, if you give sacrificially, not grudgingly, not because you have to, but if you genuinely give from the bottom of your heart, you will experience joy and enduring happiness. And that's what the American dream is all about, right? So if you want to give, if you want to experience the American dream, guess what? Just give. <laughs> give this morning, give faithfully, give generously, and the Lord will bless you. Brother Tim, why don't you pray of your Lord's offering this morning?
we sang this song Friday night, but we were having trouble with the sound, so we decided to sing it again. So worship with us as we sing the Lord. It matters what you believe in, doesn't it? And I believe that the Lord is who he says he is, and he'll do what he says he'll do. Amen. So just worship with us as we sing it. From the beginning, you've been unchanging. Age to age, you stay. Constant, you remain. Every mystery, the questions I've carried. Are safe within your will, so I trust you even still. I believe you are who you say you are, you do what you say you'll do, you'll come through. You are always able. I believe.
that you rose again in victory and that same power lives in me i'm born again i've been made free i believe i believe that the gates of hell will not prevail your church is still alive and well this gospel truth i live to tell i believe i believe that one day soon you'll split the sky you're coming for a spotless bride until my faith has been made sight i believe i believe i believe you are who you say you say you'll do you'll come through you are always able i believe you've already made a way so i'm running through parted ways straight to you you are all already 
Well, let's give Him praise. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. He is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, King of kings and Lord of lords. Some might say He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my strength. He's my strong tower. Oh, I tell you. That's what it all comes down to. You gotta believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God bless you. You can be seated. We have been seeking him this week through revival. Every sermon Pascarilla has preached, Brother Pascarilla has shared with us, I believe is just built on the previous one. So if you're not able to be here uh, the last few nights, I encourage you. I believe they're going to be available online on the YouTube. I encourage you, whether guys, you're out in the shop, ladies, you're in the house doing the dishes, turn it on, listen to it. You will be blessed. Faith-building sermons we've heard this week, and we're going to hear another one here in a few moments, the Lord willing. Amen. And I just am looking forward to what God has in store all day today. This morning service back here at 630 tonight. Trusting God to meet us here. Praise the Lord. So I want Brother Pascarilla to come. Amen. Take his liberty and preach to us. So thankful that you're here this morning. We've had several that have made it an effort to be here every night. Thank you. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Amen. We're just looking forward to what God's going to do. He's reviving us. He's restoring us. Thank you to all those who helped us with meals and uh, accommodations. God bless you. We appreciate your faithfulness and all the effort and hard work. Amen. If you're a visitor, I think I see some visitors here this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to Broadway Assembly. Yeah, give them a hand. If this is your first time, we want you to come back. Thank you for experiencing this worship service with us. God bless you. Come, Brother Pascarilla, take your liberty. It's been a privilege to have you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jones and Broadway Assembly. This is the day that the Lord hath made. How many came ready to rejoice and be glad in it? God did his part. He made the sun come up. That's the hard part. Now all I got to do is praise him for it. So I got the easy part today. And it feels easy to praise the Lord. I do thank God for his presence that is among us. I was reminded of the story of Amanda Carpenter. I'll share this with you real quick and we'll get into the word of the Lord. Sister Jones and uh, the singers were leading us in worship in that powerful line, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he answered. And my mind went back to Amanda Carpenter. She worked for Senator Ted Cruz back in 2016. She was his speech writer and uh, his communication director. And on Valentine's Day, to be exact, February the 14th, 2016, she landed late at night at the airport in D.C., and she recalled the event later. She said, it was late. I just wanted to get home and get to bed. And she got on an elevator in that airport all by herself, and it got stuck. And she sent a tweet out, and here's what she tweeted, help, I'm trapped on an Amtrak elevator. And then subsequent uh, tweets told which one it was. She tried to describe where she was in the airport. And again, that was February 14th, 2016. Seven months later, you know, uh, on September the 7th, Amtrak tweeted back, still there? Amen. Woo, I hope not. It'd be, it'd be bad by then. Still there? Need help? And, of course, that, that's when that uh, story made headlines. It became uh, comical. It was a bad PR situation, to say the least, because that's a bad response time. Wouldn't you agree? How many is glad God's got the best response time today? Amen. He is a very present help in trouble, and there's a lot of verses that come to my mind, flood my mind right now. Psalm 34 and verse 6, the psalmist said, This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And then there's a great one in Isaiah. God told about a time, he said, before they call, I will answer. That's about as fast as it gets, isn't it? 
And I don't know how you translate that verse, but here's the way I uh, read it. If you're here today and you got a desire in your heart, maybe during the worship, during the uh, move of God today, something rose up in your heart. I need revival. I need salvation, whatever. I need a touch from God before we can get it from here. And that prayer comes out of our lips. How many know God's already willing and able and ready to move? Amen. How many is glad for the response time of the Redeemer? Hallelujah. And if he's responsive, I want to be responsive. I want to respond to what he is doing today. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 22. I want to get right into the word of the Lord this morning, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. If you'll meet me there in the word of God, I don't want to be lengthy at all. I want to say thank you while you are locating Luke 22. Thank you to Pastor Jones and Broadway. My family and I have just enjoyed this revival since Wednesday night. I enjoyed being part of Sunday school, uh, the question and answers this morning. So it's just great to be here with all of you at this great church. Thank you for your giving, everything you're doing. I heard there were some visitors here. If you're a visitor, you come back to hear this man. I'm his understudy. Amen. We went to Bible school together, and uh, I'm not a representation of the same level of preaching you hear from Pastor Jones, but I'm delighted to be here today. How many want God to speak to us this morning? Amen. Luke chapter 22, I want to preach the simple gospel. Let's begin reading in verse 31. Luke 22 and verse 31. If you want to be reminded of where we're at, the context of this uh, chapter here today, we're right on the heels of the Last Supper. They've taken the first communion. And then right after this, Christ is going to be in the Garden of Gethsemane. But he takes time to address Peter personally. And listen to what he says, Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Hallelujah. How many is glad you got converted one day, huh? We use that, before you're seated, as a word synonymous with salvation. Sometimes we'll talk about our conversion. Amen. What that word means in the Greek is a turnaround. In other words, I'm on the wrong road going towards hell, but I turned around. Amen. And I'm walking with God. How many believe it could be a turning point for somebody's life right here today? You may be seated. I was going to read much more. Maybe we'll... Refer to some other verses in a moment. I, I want to look at these two verses today uh, that we read. Two people or two powers that are still at work in our world today are mentioned by Christ here. In verse 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And so over here on one side, We have Satan sifting. But then in the next verse, he said, But I have prayed for thee. Hallelujah. And so while Satan is sifting, the Savior is supplicating. Amen. I want to preach about that work, that tug of war that is going on today. What is Jesus doing right now? There's a lot of things he's doing, but one thing we know, he is lifting our name up. To the Father. Amen. How many, how many has ever heard that term? I'm sure if you went to church at all, I've heard pastor this week get up and say, let's lift so and so up in prayer, right? Let's lift their name up. I want to preach just a few minutes today on sifted but lifted. Amen. Sifted but lifted. Can we raise our hands one more time? Let's just call on God together. Heavenly Father, We come to you this morning. I thank you for your spirit. It is here. Thank you for your word. It is still relevant. And I pray right now, will you do for us what you did for Peter? Will you lift us up above the sin and the trouble of the world? And we'll give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Sifted but lifted. Hallelujah. I love history. And I read this story recently 
about a man by the name of Mac Benson. Maybe this will be a runway into the Word of God that I want to get to today. Mac Benson, he wasn't anybody famous per se. Way back in 1861, he came to Washington, D.C. with a desperate need. Of course, the Civil War was raging in America at that time. And Mac Benson had a son, Josiah was his name, Josiah Benson. He was a soldier in the Union Army. And one night that boy fell asleep on guard duty. And if you've read anything about history, you know the punishment for that. He was going to be executed, brought before the firing squad. And sure enough, if you're a parent, you'll relate to this. Mike Benson said, when I heard that news, he was a dairy farmer in Pennsylvania. But he said, I dropped everything I was doing. I got on my best horse and for two days he rode almost nonstop. And when he got to the White House, his plan was simple. He was going to go to uh, the front door and he was going to get the attention of President Abraham Lincoln and he was going to beg for pardon and mercy. But how many know you don't just waltz into the White House, right? And when he got there, Brother Tim, he was met at the gate by the guards and when they found out his reason for being there, they began to mock him and belittle him. And they said things like this, the president don't have time for you. Are you kidding? We're in a war. There's all kinds of problems. You're not important enough. The president don't care about you. Uh, hallelujah. How many's glad we got a God that's better than that this morning? Uh, I just throw that in right here. If you're here today and the devil's been telling you that, I, I want to remind somebody we don't have to have a big name. If we have a big need, we have a big God that cares about every one of us. Isn't that the truth? My dad used to say, Brother Jones knew my dad, he would always say it don't matter if your name is Pascara, a Rockefeller or Pascarella we have a God that cares about the individual. Amen. And sure enough uh, to make a long story short, Mike Benson was turned away and he said later, as I left that feeling of hopelessness came over him and he crumbled right there on the White House lawn he began to weep overwhelmed and here's why I'm telling this he felt a little hand on his shoulder and a, a young boy asked him what's wrong mister and perhaps because he had no one else he looked up and began to pour his heart out and he said I can't get to the president I'm not important enough. And that little boy said, I can get you to him. And come to find out, it was Tad Lincoln, the son of President Abraham Lincoln. And he reached down and grabbed him by the hand. And you can guess the difference this time. They walked right past those guards into the Oval Office. And Tad Lincoln said, Dad, this is my friend. He needs you. And the pardon was signed. Hallelujah. Abraham Lincoln said later, I had to help him. He came through my son. He had already touched the heart of my son. Well, how many is glad this morning? There's a better son in the house. And his name is Jesus. Praise God. I'll tell you my testimony today. I I couldn't get to the Father. I, I wasn't holy enough. I wasn't worthy enough. I, but I'm glad the Son heard my cry I, and He lifted me. I, how many is glad we've been saved by the Father through the Son? Amen. Won't we give Him a hand clap of praise for so great salvation? Hallelujah. How many is glad we come to the Father through the Son named Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. I want to look at our text real quickly today. Luke chapter 22. Here we meet a soul that was salvaged by the Son. Amen. Peter was his name. Every Bible reader here knows about Simon Peter. A soul that was sifted, but a soul that was salvaged by the Son. Amen. I'm going to resist the temptation 
of every preacher and that is to go up and down every side street and cover everything about Simon Peter leading up to this point. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. I want to get right to the heart of these verses that we read. And so if you'll look at these two verses with me today, notice with me number one, we have a destructive foe. Amen? We have a destructive foe. I did not come to glorify him. Not at all. There is victory over him. But how many found out very quickly, sin and Satan is not our friend, it's our foe, right? Amen. Listen again to what Jesus said in Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold. That word behold there in the Greek means pay attention. Listen up. Focus in. Kind of what I do to my children. They're good, but every once in a while I can tell their, their minds over here and I say, hey, right here, focus. Amen. And notice the next word that Jesus says after he gets our attention. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Uh-oh. We have a destructive foe. Now, right away, Christ teaches us a couple things about our enemy right here. Number one, he tells us where Satan's attention is. Uh, where Satan's attention is. Everybody do like this, if, we, if you will. We did this the other night, but you humor me, if you will. And if you're wondering who I'm preaching to today, if you're wondering who the sermon is for today, now this is startling at first, Pastor, because if you ask me, who is the devil targeting right now? I don't feel like I'm anywhere on his radar important enough. I like to point to the world missionary or the pastor or the great prayer warrior or some saint of God who has been in this for years. But Christ made it very clear. Did you notice he said it twice? Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Amen. And isn't it something... Later on, we know Peter's saga. He had his up and down, his moment of failure and backsliding. But when Peter came back, he picked up the pen and echoed this. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, he said, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. How many know we need to wake up in America? Amen. There is a lion on the loose. I'm going to say that again today. Why do we need revival? Isn't it something the world looks at us, they think we're crazy. You're going to church every night. Why are you trying to get full of the Spirit of God? Why are you trying to get revived? I'll tell you why. We love God. That's the main reason. But another reason is there is a lion on the loose. Amen. But I'll tell you this morning, if if we have a personal enemy, the devil, how many is glad we have a personal Savior? Uh, and we can have a personal baptism uh, in the Holy Ghost. Isn't that good news this morning? Hallelujah. The devil is after us, though. Christ addressed that. I had a flashback this morning when I was reading over these verses. I remember years ago, I took my family to the zoo it was a Little Rock, Arkansas zoo. We were in revival, and I had a day off, and we went to the zoo. My children were young, and I was standing in front of that lion exhibit, and this gentleman, the zoologist, or whatever, whatever you want to call him, the lion trainer, whatever he is, he don't get paid enough. I guarantee you that. Hey, man, but this guy was telling us about the African lion, and he was talking about the roar. How many know the lion's roar is a weapon? That roar is devised to bring fear, to scatter the flock uh, or the herd. And there, there's some things about this I had never thought of before. He was talking about how powerful that lion's roar is. Uh, and he said when that lion roars in the African safari 
and the, the herd of zebra begin to run. He gets them isolated. That's one thing the devil likes. How I many know oh, the devil don't like when we come together on Sunday morning? There is strength and unity. Strength as we sing and we hear the word of God together corporately. The devil likes to get us off one by one. Uh, but here's what I'd never considered. That zoologist said, amen, in that moment the lion is very cerebral and he starts sizing up, amen, those uh, zebra or whatever is they're running and here's what's going through that lion's mind they've concluded amen that guy right there he's fast amen he's going to be hard to catch he's running good that lady over there she's strong but that guy right there he's limping look at him amen something's wrong he's vulnerable he's wounded and that lion makes amen his mark right in and my mind went to our enemy the devil and I'm going to ring it again. How many know why we need revival? Amen. How many understand the need of our soul? I'll tell you how I feel this morning. I don't want to let the lion catch me limping. Amen. If the devil's looking at me right now, I don't want to let the lion catch me limping. Is there anybody here today that says I want to get full of the Spirit and I want to run in the power of the Lord? Lord. Amen. I, I love what Isaiah said. I'm going to move on. But I love Isaiah chapter 40. What is the remedy for being lunch for the lion? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I've always thought that was interesting, Pastor. It's a digress. I would have wrote it opposite. We're going to walk, we're going to run, we're going to fly. Uh, but it seems like God is saying, if you don't feel like you're flying, uh, amen, at least run. Uh, if you don't feel like you're running, at least keep walking. Uh, you got to keep on the move to heaven. Uh, amen. But I'll tell you what the ultimate plan of God is. Uh, amen. How many believe Christ? We are made to be raised up together in heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus. How many would like to get there today? Amen. Amen. The, the devil is symbolized as a lion, but the church is symbolized as an eagle. Amen. And I'll tell you what, uh, what, what my motto is. The lion is roaring, but the eagles are soaring. Amen. I believe we can live a level above the enemy. That doesn't mean I'll never sin. That doesn't mean I'll never fall. But how many still believe there is victory? over the world, the flesh, and the devil in Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. I, I, I about shouted today. Can I preach just a few more minutes here? I about shouted when I read this, this verse again because did you notice both Christ and Peter used the word may. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And Peter picked up on that. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know what that tells me? I didn't come to paint a bleak picture. Amen. He may get me, but he may not. Amen. He might get me if I stop praying. Yeah. If I stop coming to church and walking in the spirit, but he might not. How many know we might have revival? We might stay under the blood. Hallelujah. How many like God's might to make your might a reality? Amen. That's what we need today. Amen. How many's ever heard Heard that term, the Lord willing, if the creek don't rise. I know I'm up here in the city. I'm a Kentucky boy. Y'all say that in Lorraine. Hey Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. The Lord willing, if the creek don't rise. I always thought that was an old country saying, a colloquialism. But I was in, the, in Alabama recently, and I, we stopped at an a American Indian Museum, the American Indian War, and their claim, amen, on the wall of that museum was that uh, American general coined that, talking about the Creek tribe, the Indian tribe. They were aggressive. They were in attack mode. And he sent the message out, I'll be there 
if the creek don't rise. Amen. He wasn't talking about the water. He's talking about the enemy. If the enemy don't rise up and push me back and hinder me. And how many know if we're not careful, we get this mentality. I'm going to get closer to God if the devil will let me. Amen. I'm going to press in and have revival. I'm going to serve God if the devil won't rise up against me and stop me. I'm I'm here to preach to somebody today. You can conquer even when the creek rises. Hey man, it's not if. I know he's going to fight me. I know the enemy of my soul is after me. But we have a promise. Isaiah 59 and 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. How many is glad we can conquer even when the creek rises? Amen? But I got to beware. I see where Satan's attention is. I see what Satan's intention is. Uh Uh-oh. How many know he's got bad intentions for every life, every home, every nation? Listen again to verse 31. Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. That's his intention. Christ used an agricultural term. How many has ever seen a sifter? My great-grandmother had one. We'd get it out and you'd put that uh, flour in there and shake it around. There's a separation that goes on. In Bible days, I thought of this on Friday when the wind was blowing up here. They'd get out on the winnowing floor in the Old Testament and they'd take that wheat and they'd throw it up in the wind and and the wind would blow the chaff away. It'd blow the empty, the worthless away and that good heavy grain would fall to the ground Uh, and there's a separation. How many get the picture that what does the devil want to do to every one of us right now? He wants to shake my faith in these times. Uh, He wants to get me in the wind of trouble and adversity uh, and he wants to, he wants to steal the good grain out of my life uh, and leave me with emptiness. Uh, I mean, oh, that's what the devil leaves people with. Uh, that prodigal got down to the hog pen. Uh, all he had was the husk uh, that the swine did eat, the chaff. Uh, amen. The wheat was stolen. Uh, I'm glad there is a return uh, and a refilling and a restoration uh, that can happen through Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ gave a solemn warning. And if we stopped right there, it is a word of warning, but it'd be kind of discouraging, wouldn't it? But there's one more verse. Amen. I thank God for that next verse. We have a destructive foe, but we have a dedicated friend. Amen. How many is glad for that friend named Jesus? Uh, Glory to God. And listen to how, let me wrap this up. Listen to how Jesus said this. Simon, Simon. Amen. He he repeated that twice. And there's a great personal study you can do right there. Many of you have probably looked into that any time in the Bible when God or in the New Testament, Jesus called a name twice, it was urgent. How many believe we're living in an urgent time right now? You don't have to be a prophet to read the news, Israel under attack. Amen. The signs of the times are all around us. Uh, Amen. You go through the Bible. I won't give them all to you. There's many more. Here's some off the top of my head. In Genesis 22 uh, when Abraham laid his son Isaac, how many remember that? On the altar and he's getting ready to slay him. Uh, the, The angel of the Lord said, Abraham Abraham, Abraham, Uh, amen, in Exodus 3 at the burning bush, uh, God said, Moses, Moses, uh, on the cross, uh, Jesus said, my God, my God, Uh, he walked into the city one day and said, oh, Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, Uh, and right here he makes an individual call, uh, Simon, Simon, Uh, how many believe if we could get our ear open spiritually, he's calling our name, right? now. I'm going to make it personal. Jerry, Jerry. Broadway Assembly. Broadway Assembly. Amen. Christ is calling for somebody to do what we were singing about. Trust in Him. Lean on Him in the sifting times. And Jesus said this. Amen. Satan is trying to sift you, but I have prayed for thee. Hallelujah. Does that thrill anybody's soul today? 
That, that makes me rejoice. How many, it's a rhetorical question. How many like it when Pastor Jones comes by and says, I've been praying for you? We like that, don't we? How many like it when some prayer warrior that you got confidence in says, I've got you on my prayer list. We were praying for you at men's prayer yesterday. Man, I feel good about that. I feel like I'm not alone. Uh, but I got good news today. If nobody ever prays for you, uh, Jesus ever liveth uh, to make intercession for us. Uh, what is he doing right now? He is praying uh, that we survive the sifting of Satan. Amen? Glory to God. Here's what I want to leave you with today. There's much more that could be preached, but this is really when God pressed this on my heart earlier this week. Amen. Christ, what is he praying? He said, I'm praying that your faith fail not. Amen. In the Greek, pastor, that's one word. We got, it's a sentence almost in our English language, that your faith fail not. But in the Greek, it's one word, a clippo. A clippo. And we got... We took that Greek word and brought it into English, and we got our word eclipse. Amen. Anybody heard anything about an eclipse lately, huh? Sure you have. If you've not been under a rock, we've heard about the eclipse that Monday where I was at. We were coming up out of North Carolina, and about almost 3 p.m., amen, where I was at, it went dark for about Four, uh, four and a half minutes. You know what an eclipse is, a solar eclipse. It's when something, the moon gets between the earth and the sun. Amen. And all of a sudden it is dark. Uh, and you're stuck in uh, temporary darkness at least. Uh, and now we get the word picture of what Christ is saying. What are you praying for about me, Lord? I'm, I, I'm praying uh, that nothing gets between you uh, and the sun. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here and help me real quick, Brother Tim, if you will. Brother Jones is going to be a, a, a Jesus, and I'll be Peter. Amen. And there was a time when they were close. Amen. Peter got to go up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter walked on the water with Jesus. But I wish Peter would have took this warning. You stay right there, and you stay where you are. Amen. But Peter started following afar off. How many remember that? He didn't listen to this message. It went in one ear and out the other, and it wasn't long on the way to Calvary and to the trial. Peter is following him afar off. What has happened? Hey Amen. Something got between him and the sun. Why is it that we live in darkness, the discouragement of life, the darkness of trouble, the darkness of sorrow? We let something get between us and the sun. I'll tell you what revival is today. And I'll tell you what my prayer, I'd like to get to the place uh, where I'd say I'm not living in the eclipse. Uh, I'm not letting anything get between me uh, and the sun. Uh, how many would like to draw nigh to God? Uh, and he will draw nigh to you. Uh, and we can live in the light. Uh, how many believe the will of God is for us to live in the light in a world that's eclipsed in the dark? Amen. I'm going to quit right there. Let's stand, everybody that will. Come on, lift your hands up right now and say, God, give me a revival where the eclipse rolls away and the light of God's glory, the light of the world, the salvation of my soul, Jesus Christ, is bright and close to me again. Amen. Hallelujah. Sifted but lifted. Somebody come to music, if you will, this morning. I want to hasten to the altar. Thank you for this opportunity to preach the gospel to you today. Amen. What is Christ saying right here? We have a destructive foe. His attention is on you. His intention is towards you. He's got an attention on you and an intention for you. We have a destructive foe. We have a dedicated friend. He is praying. He is the great high priest. But how many is glad we have a delightful future? Amen. Failure is not final. Aren't you glad for that? Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, it's a little late. I'm already sifted. I already feel like all the good is drained out. I'm empty. And I, I needed this sermon maybe some time back. You, you, know, you know what, Pastor, I want to say this as I make the altar call. Peter, the sad thing is he didn't take this sermon in the timely manner. I stopped reading some verses after this I was going to read. And, and you can go home and read it. 
You know what Peter did? He did what we've all done. This isn't for me. Oh, you're worried about me, Jesus. Don't worry about me. And he said, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to go with you to prison and the death. How many know we're not always as ready as we think we are? We're not always as ready in the flesh as we think we are. We're not always as bold and powerful in ourselves as we think we are. And it wasn't very long Peter failed. He, he, he failed and he fell. He didn't take the sermon. He didn't take the warning. It went through one ear and out the other. He sat down by a fire and he couldn't look a little maid servant in the eye and admit I'm one of them. Oh, I never knew the man. I know he just calls him a man. He curses. He denies. He falls. But I'm glad failure is not final. Hallelujah. And I wrote down three words. I wrote down three words today. Sifted, lifted, and gifted. Amen. Peter got up in the upper room and he got the gift of the Holy Ghost and he was never the same. Amen. He never was wavering up and down, hot and cold. He came out of there and wrote First and Second Peter. How many believe there's a life of victory for every one of us in this house today? Amen. There is an overcoming life. Preacher, you don't know me. I've been up and down. I've been in and out. I've never been able to be stable. I've never been able to live this way. Listen, God would like to take you from sifted to lifted to gifted. Amen. And I'll leave you with this, but I felt this on my heart. Years ago, I read in a popular science magazine, they, they gave the formula and the reasoning scientifically for why a ball bounces. It's above my pay grade. Amen. All I know is I take a ball and it bounces. Amen. That's all I know. Uh, but I loved how they broke it down. They spelled it out. F-I-R-E. Fire. And I took this back in 2000s and preached this at a lot of youth camps. Fire. Amen. Here, here's the method. Fall. They drop that ball and it falls. And then I. Impact. It hits bottom. Bedrock bottom. And then R. Rebound. And then E. Elevation. A lot of times that ball will bounce higher than it was when you dropped it. Amen. The fire method. You know what Peter did? He went through them all. Fall, impact, rebound, elevation by the grace of God. And he got in the upper room and a fire, amen, broke out. How many would like to be on fire for Jesus in the rain? How many would like the passion, the first love to come back? Jesus is coming back for a church, not that's living in the eclipse, Amen. The things of the world have clouded their vision and they're dark. He's coming back for a church that's on fire. In love with Him. Amen. How many like God to give a revival in your soul this morning? Come on, let's open the altar right now. If you don't know Him, come. If you already know Him, but you want to be closer. You want to live in the light as He is in the light. Can we come right now and say, God, draw me nearer. I don't want to be sifted. You say, preacher, I'm already saved. So was Peter. He was a saint, but God had a warning for the disciple. God had a warning for every one of us, saved or lost. You don't have to be sifted. He's praying right now that you'll be lifted. Amen. Oh, lift us up, God. Lift us up. God, let the gift of your salvation be bestowed in my life. Let the gift of the Holy Spirit be in my heart. Let the power of God to outrun the enemy be upon me, God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, friends. Come on, visitors. Anybody who would love to come, this altar is open right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't want to be lunch for the lion. I want to be an overcomer.